Candace Duvall, and I am the one behind Candace Duvall Art. I make oceanic scenes, seascapes, and other related nature things. And my methods would be acrylic pours and alcohol inks. Nice, nice. Uh, so how did you get started with everything? How did you get into art? Um, I would say growing up, I was always really artistic. Um, everything I did, whether it was singing or um, dancing, didn't matter. If it was artistic, I was doing it. So growing up, I, I sketched a lot. Every cartoon I watched, I would draw the Animaniacs, all that stuff, Pokemon, you name it, I drew it. Um, and I guess probably it was like when I hit high school that I just kind of, I stopped doing all that and it was just one of those things I kind of fell out of it and I fell out of drawing. I didn't ever make a connection over the painting. It was about six years ago, I had just had my, my five-year-old son and I got to a point where as a mom, I was just like, ah, I need a break from everything and I need a break from everything and I I was like what what's gonna do it what's gonna clear my mind and I ended up going to this paint class and for and for about four hours the paint class was three hours I made them stay an hour for about four hours I just painted away I forgot everybody was there I didn't even listen to the instructor I looked at the picture on the wall and I copied it I mean, even the lady was like, your painting doesn't look like mine. And I was like, I wasn't painting yours. I painted the one on the wall, the one I picked. You know, you have to pick them. Right. Like, oh, right. Hello, what about the one on the wall? All right. So I painted it, and then I realized, like, that, wow, that really took everything off. So from then on out, I just started playing in paint, pretty much, is what I call it. So when you started painting, uh, was it hard to find... Um, people that like supported what you were doing? Did you have criticism? I feel like um, being an artist in general is hard because when people see that you have skill or talent, they'll, they push you. They're like, do it, do it, you've got this. And then when it doesn't come easy, um, then you, and art is not easy. It's not easy to create it and make it. So you have everybody pushing you to do it, you get to that point and it almost is like a plateau effect for a while. You're creating stuff and you feel like maybe all of a sudden it's not working as well. And that always starts out with you having supporters and you'll find that you have these supporters, you have these people that want you to do it and then you know, you'll have this criticism. And it'll be from just anybody random or it'll be maybe you come to somebody and say, well, it's not, it's not selling like it was. It'll be small criticism, criticism at first, like, well, maybe you should, uh, you know, not do this or, or with me, it was, um, I got a lot of criticism on my poor arts. Um, and it came from places I didn't even realize it would. I had everybody going, oh, this looks amazing, post it. And I would, and then I would have these other people attack me and go, how are you going to post something like that? That criticism for me um, was just harsh to take because it's already hard to open up and create. To think that somebody's going to step in and say, I don't like the way you created that. I don't like, I don't like how you got to that is hard. Uh, creativity wise, part of you wants to just stop and be like, ah, oh, I don't, I don't want to do this. But then the other half of you has to realize that you're gaining purpose out of that. Whether it's to clear your mind, um, get rid of anxiety and depression, whatever you're painting for, you just have to remember that that criticism, that criticism is good. That criticism is doing what art should do. Art should evoke something. It should bring awareness of of whatever maybe they took out of that. Maybe that's a good platform for you to use and clear up whatever they felt. It's an opportunity for us to branch out to each other, really. And um, I take criticism just as well as I take the compliments. That's good advice, that's good advice. Uh, so I know you've been painting for a while now. Um, so what point of time do you think you started reaching success 
And what do you think um, caused that? Man, I'll tell you what, painting, being an artist in general, you, you have these, I always tell everybody that being an artist is a roller coaster of success. And it's not all highs and it's not all making those sales. So really, I think that I gain my success and I take my success as I can sell paintings every month. That's my success uh, right now. But there's some months that I that still go by that I'm still not making those that those sales. Um, so basically, with art, you know, I do feel like I don't know. It's not about being successful if you're going to be an artist. You really have to want to push the envelope with society. You have to be able to want to be a leader. You have to want to be an innovator, somebody who wants to change the world. If you're just doing it to get money, you're not going to make it. And it's not going to be successful to you unless you get it in the wrong way. And um, I do think that being a successful artist means that you keep going. You know, to me, a successful artist is somebody who's been doing it for years who just doesn't give up. That's success. And it's not, and it doesn't get enough rounds on the back. Nobody claps enough for the person who stopped. You know what I mean? And in, they say it all the time in art. You'll get famous when you die. And that sucks. But in the spectrum of things, I'd like to think that Instagram can change that for us. You know, I, I'd like to think that um, a lot of people who need that clap on the back or who need that encouragement to keep going can get it off of Instagram. I've gotten a lot of my claps and my, you know, my good jobs from Instagram. That has helped with my success a lot because I had been painting for a while. It's not until I got on Instagram that really it took off. And it only took off because of the messages I sent when I sent those posts out. They weren't always easy mm -hmm. topics to talk about. I bring up a lot of mental health awareness. I like to draw attention to um, our relationships, how people treat each other. Um, I do have a lot of opinions. I do have a lot of things that I think I can share with the world that we can all have either a different perspective or, you know, a voice on. So I think that the thing that's made me the most successful is just being myself. Um, it's so easy to get knocked out in that Instagram world and start being something you're not or start painting something because everyone else is doing it and you feel like you have to jump on that loop. I mean, it's good and it's sometimes for us and it brings out our creativity, but at the end of the day, you have to remember why you started painting what you like to paint and just, just keep going even when nobody's giving you a clap on the back. Just know that your success is not measured by how many likes, follows, and handshakes you get. It's not measured by the amount of sales. It's measured by the people you affect and you touch that go, when I do, when I can buy something, I'm going to buy from you, you know, or, hey, I, I really like that you keep going. It's, it's, the, it's the lies that you touch that make you successful. It has nothing to do with selling a painting every month because that's not going to come as an artist all the time. That's beautiful. That was definitely well said and touching. Okay. To Seriously. <laughs> I get passionate about it because, you know, as our world just, it's changing so much before our eyes and we are comparing ourselves like crazy to each other. It's so crazy to me. And I do it all the time too. I see artists like y'all and I'm like, man, like, I can never draw a line like that. I'm not a good artist. And all of a sudden I put myself down forgetting that I have a message, a purpose. I bring my own color to the rainbow and it's not a rainbow without my color. Right. So I can't look at every other color and be like, I wish I was that color. Instead, I need to be like, that's an awesome color. I want to help support that color. I want to like, share, comment their stuff. I want to buy their print if I can't afford their original. I want to show up to their art shows. I want to give them a shout out. Like. You know, that is what it's about. See, this is one of the main reasons why I was like, we definitely got to get an interview. You were hanging up? They were like getting close. Oh, it was like in my videos, I was like, oh, look at my nails. <laughs> like when I pick something out, I'm like, here, would you like to look at it? They're like, what are you doing? I'm like, take it, take, take it, take it. Like don't want to like hand it to them like yeah, that. Yeah, yeah. I'm like, here. 
Open palms. <laughs> I got ink on. Oh, we got paint. Okay. So let's jump right back into it. Okay. Um, <clears throat> so you pretty much uh, you pretty much answered one of my other questions that I was gonna ask as far as um, were you finding more success um, in person or like where you getting most of your clientele through social media because it seems like you got a good like you got a great following and it okay. seems like you got a good handle on how to continue building it so do you have any advice on that and and also back to the first question or more your clientele on social media or is it based in person to person contact i would say in the beginning it was definitely based on person to person contact and I was doing a lot of shows. I wasn't doing a lot of Instagram at all. Instagram made me nervous. I was always worried somebody was going to steal my image and just take it. But when I, when I just decided to go Instagram, it definitely was a growth spurt for me. It, no matter how you look at Instagram, it is, it is a networking you know, uh, app where you can put yourself out there again and people are looking in our time right now for people to just be real you know mm -hmm. everybody I, even i have changed up my instagram it mm -hmm. was a perfect video with a perfect white background this and that and finally i was just like i don't want to show perfect anymore it's you know i don't want to go out buy a hundred dollar shadow mm -hmm. box and all this stuff why am i doing all this to post a video so i can get more business like it gets to a point where, you know, you're doing so much to create the perfect content that your creativity, once again, gets sucked out, you know? Yeah. Then you see people doing other people's things or trying other people's stuff because it's just an art blog. So I try to look at it like I get on Instagram to show people about me. You know, it's like getting a megaphone from me and being like, hey guys, this is me. This is what I stand for. It's a good way to to be purposeful and also be able to continue doing my therapy because my art is my therapy. So to me, it, it has worked for me in that way. But with just as, just as much success as it's brought, it also has that downside of, um, of it being overwhelming. You can have, uh, you know, and also it's a way it's, I've had just as many bad opportunities come through as I have good. And it can almost make you bitter and make you not even want to work with people. Because when you work with people face to face, you know, you get their vibe, you get their sense of what's going to happen and everything. And there have been several times where I've agreed to something on Instagram and pulled up and I'm like, this is not going to work, you know? Yeah. So um, it's just Instagram. It, I, I tell people all the time, use it as your megaphone to put out what you want, you know, but be careful what you ask for because you will get it, you know? Right, that's true. And that's with true. my Instagram, it has been like that. I did wake up overnight and it was just, I couldn't refresh my Instagram fast enough. Okay, so that's good. So what, uh, what kind of advice can you give to others about um, like content on Instagram and things like that for social media? Yeah, because I remember when we, when we first met, and he was he was giving a lot of good you know tips on yeah. like also switching up with the hashtags and things like that. I mean, through it, I have learned a lot. I because that is my only way of marketing. Mm -hmm. So on Instagram, um, what a lot of people don't know is one one common thing that I do. Um, I post a video and I will post that same video three times, and the first one to get a comment hint is the first one that I keep, and I archive the other two. You can look at me, you can look at my thing and see 200 posts, but really there's like, there's like hundreds archived. And that's what I, I recently stopped doing that because I did realize that with, with, um, with getting the, with knowing that and taking these other ones down and only showing the good all the time, um, I just realized how hard I was working at it to get all that attention on one post. With that being said, I've done other things now that make it to where I don't have to go that extreme. But a lot of people don't realize when you're doing your hashtags and, and other things, you can't keep putting the same hashtags. Um, look at it like if you go into Explore and you start looking through Explore, half those people you've already seen. You don't click on their stuff anymore. But 
if you throw in a new hashtag or you are going through your art hashtags and you see somebody you've never seen, you instantly click on them. Hmm. Whether it even has to do specifically with art or not, you're going to click on it. It could be a guy with a beaver and do it yourself. And you're like, I got to see what this guy does. So you're going <laughs> to click on it. So sometimes I just throw weird hashtags in there because people do follow hashtags. When they see someone new, they go to them. That's just how it works. So I would probably keep 15 of the same hashtags and I call them my home hashtags. I like to stay in there. So, um, you know, it's just kind of like, I feel like it's a big group chat to me almost at this point. Then the new ones that I pick, um, I always just make sure that somehow I relate to that. I don't go completely off the wall, you know, but if I normally do design, I'll do designs. If I do decor, I'll do decors, you know, either adding an S or, or just trying to bring in different viewers all the time, different viewers. If I talk about feelings, then I'll hashtag the feelings or whatever. But if you go through my hashtags, it's all relatable to what's going on, you know, to me and in, in my life and my world. So that's, that's one thing I can tell people. And the hashtags and stories. If you're not using a hashtag in your story, then, and you're trying to, and you're trying to get people to watch that, you know, then you're wasting good marketing opportunity because everybody watches stories now. They watch stories more, most of the time people are so fast going through the stories that they're not even going through their feed. And when you put those hashtags on those stories, I always go to whatever hashtag I follow. Say I follow Fluid Art, I'll go there, I'll look through my hashtags. There are so many times that I see my watercolor or whatever in there. And in that hashtag, there's thousands and thousands and thousands of people. So I'll get an extra thousand people looking at my story They'll scroll through the rest of my stories to go to my page. And I get tons of people coming to my page off of using hashtags and stories. That's, that's, that's it true. It sounds dumb. <laughs> yeah. But you have to take yourself out of the mentality of hashtag whatever and realize that if you're there for marketing, then mm -hmm. be true to that. Exactly. And do it. Don't, <laughs> don't get halfway and be afraid to put yourself the rest of the way out because so many people do that. And then you just look like everybody else. You let, you know, don't be on the fence, be you, get all the way over, you know, and hashtag who you are and let people feel that they'll ride with you then, you know, yeah, yeah. they feel like they know you. Yeah, I know that's, that's definitely uh, true because we, we actually go on hashtags and look at, um, the, the artwork and different things on the mm -hmm. hashtag. So I know for a fact, personally, from experience that people actually do look at those hashtags and go through and look at uh, different things that's on there. So great advice, good point. So do you have um, anything additional that you just want to get off your mind? For anybody watching this that is trying to be an artist, is struggling, just know that it comes with the territory of being an artist and you just have to stay true to yourself there's going to be plenty of people that tell you to change up, to do different things or, or, you know, whatever. But just remember that nobody who's doing better than you will, will ever say anything like that. You know, it's just the ones doing less than sure. you that would ever try to tell you something, mm -hmm. you know? And I always tell people all the time, like art is not for the weak. If you're in it, you're in it for other reasons than just making money. You feel things and you, you are meant to change the world. So do it. You know what I mean? Be your color, bring your color to the rainbow. Be proud, support the other colors. You know, let's not tear each other down. It would be a lot easier if all these other artists would, you know, support each other and admire how different we are. It would, it would change a lot, you know? So just stay true to you and know that you have a purpose. And you do have a message and it's important. It's important that everybody hears how you feel and that you relate to people that you're supposed to relate to in life. You could save a life. You could do a lot of things in this world, you know, but you're the change. Artists are the change. So go ahead and uh, give out all your social media because um, after this release, everybody's going to definitely be Aww. trying to get to know you a little bit and well, get more knowledge because I know you still have so much like so much up there that you can just 
like go on all day long about I mean I do and I put a lot of it in my stories I mm -hmm. you know any struggles I go through I'm real good about sharing it people know when I'm going through things if if I have a something go out with my you know if I have a falling out or something people know you know and I I do try to put that out there you know feelings and stuff I have an Instagram and I that's it that's all I work off of that is my okay. platform and it's Candace Duval art and that's it. That's all I do. I, I don't do Facebook. I don't do too much because um, I feel like a lot of people on social platforms, they do what everybody does. They go out and they get each one. And it's already hard enough for me to stay in contact with the people on my, on my Instagram. If you're viewing my stories, even if I'm not following you back, I'm going back to your stuff and I'm liking your stuff. I'm commenting your stuff. Even, you know, if I'm... I, I just, I believe so much that you should share. If anybody's sharing their energy with you, you share it back. You know, you invest in other people how you want people to invest in you. And so I'm a big, big supporter, you know. If somebody goes out of their way to comment my stuff or whatever, I go out of my way to do the same thing for them. And, you know, then you'll really see that growth take place because people will see your stuff and be like, oh man, you know, da da da. Right. Instead of it being a ghost town on your post, a lot of people don't realize you have to put that love out there. You're not gonna get anything back sitting back, working three different social medias, you know, you're not gonna get anything. You have to invest in one and invest all, all yourself, you know, and be there when the people DM you, when they message you and stuff, be personable, you know, like talk to them and stuff and, you know, because as an artist, again, people are not just, they're not just buying art. Anybody can go on to Target and buy art, you know? Right. When they're going and searching your stuff, they're searching for, for everything about you, you know? They're buying an idea of you. So you, you need to sell yourself, you know, and sell it right. Don't half-ass it on multi-media sites. It's not gonna work. That's true. <laughs> What's well, not? All right, well, we appreciate, um Appreciate everything. Yeah. And the love. I like sharing it because I do feel like we are in a time in our world right now where, especially artists, we're being divided. And that's just, that's not where we need to go, you know? Yeah. That's not. So it's good for people to know that even if you have a big social media and stuff, it's, it's still not, oh my gosh, I'm sold out of everything, you know? Mm -hmm. It's still not that. They don't, the likes, the followers don't translate into money but what does translate for me is the the support mm -hmm. and that i see from my community and the people that puts me in network with like you guys you know like good-hearted people that i know are going to change the world i get to all of a sudden get to connect with and that is probably one of the best things that instagram has done has helped link me to the world's next leaders you know absolutely that's, that's the best thing about it it's not what I've gotten back. It's, it's literally the experiences and good people that I've met. That I'm like, okay, I don't need to give up on humanity anymore. You know what I mean? I need to walk off that cliff. I don't have to drive my car off the bridge today. You know? Right. <laughs> There's hope. You know? Right. Absolutely. All right, Candice. Well, thank you so much, and uh, we'll see you around.